Hello friends, welcome to my channel Clinical Biochemistry by Dr. P.K. Prabhakar. Today I am going to talk about another enzyme of genetic engineering uh, which is uh, nuclease S1. So this is the fifth lecture in the series, uh, already four lectures I have taken it. So if you will see nuclease, the name suggests nuclease means it is the enzyme which normally works on the nucleic acid, which is normally going to uh, digest the nucleotides. So first we will see the basic information about the nuclease and then we will see what uh, how it works and where it is going to be utilized. The first thing is nuclease S1 it is a kind of endonuclease enzymes. Endonuclease means it is going to work in the in between the DNA. It is not removing the nucleotides from the terminal end either from 3 prime or 5 prime. So it is not the exonuclease it is the rather endonuclease which works inside the DNA and a split single stranded DNA and RNA into oligonucleotides and mononucleotides means the one thing you need to remember is it is a endonuclease which splits single stranded DNA. Second thing, uh, second important thing is it degrades single stranded nucleic acid releasing 5 prime phosphoryl mono or oligonucleotide. It Cleaves double stranded DNA also at the single stranded regions uh, by the nick gap and mismatch or the loop. Like you are having a double stranded nucleotide like this one. So this is the double stranded nucleus where nicking here we are having nick. So this nuclease enzyme works on the single stranded region of this portion and degrades the DNA so that it will cleaves double stranded DNA at the single stranded region. Then it activates the 3 prime phosphomonoesterase activity so that it is going to cleaves it. Although its primary structure is single stranded, it can also occasionally introduce single stranded breaks in double stranded DNA or RNA or hybrid of DNA and RNA. This nuclease S1 it works both on DNA as well as RNA, but its activity is five times more on the DNA than that on, on RNA. This is one of the example. Uh, so if you can see this is the double stranded DNA where some portion of DNA is single stranded region. So when it as S1 nuclease or nuclease S1 walks on this one, it is going to break this D single stranded DNA. Uh, so this oligonucleotide will be removed and ultimately you will have a blunt ended DNA, you will get it. So this is the basic uh, example of nuclease S1. Other than this one, if you see, uh, this is the double stranded uh, DNA which is having both sides, we are having uh, protruded ends. So, this nuclease S1 walks on this DNA and removes this fragment as well as this fragment from both the sides. So, ultimately, we will have a blunt ended DNA. So, single stranded region has been removed by this nuclease S1. So, this is how it works on the double stranded DNA. And this nuclease S1 requires zinc for their activity. Three zinc is required for by this nuclease enzyme. Same enzyme, nuclease S1, it works on single stranded DNA as well as RNA in the presence of zinc there also. And there it degrades this nucleotides. So it removes 5 prime DNMMP and ribo, uh, deoxy or ribo. If it is RNA, so it will be ribonucleotides. It will be uh, DNA, then it will be deoxyribonucleotide. So these are the two activities where it you can see it. If it is single stranded, so in the presence of zinc, it works in the acidic condition. So pH optimum pH is 4.5, where it removes nucleotides. If we are having double stranded like this one, where nick will be there. So at the nicking region, it is going to work on the double stranded DNA, and ultimately DNA will be fragmented into two pieces. So this is another function. Now if you will say uh, this nuclease S1 it also works in high concentration low concentration and different type of activity we will have. If you are having a double stranded DNA and uh, high concentration of nuclease S1 will be there in the presence of sin. So blunt in the DNA also this DNA will be completely degraded. So nucleotides will be produced. When this enzyme will be in the moderate concentration or low concentration that time it is going to only not degrade the DNA completely, it is just going to degrade single strand. So where single stranded region will be there, there it will be removed, it will be degraded. Now if you see the nucleus S1, this is well known version 
uh, include S1 from the uh, Aspergillus origi from where it has been isolated first. Nucleage P1 is found in, uh, so S1 found in from the Aspergillus origi. Nucleage P1 has been found in Penicillium citrinum. So it is called as S1P1 uh, members. So members of S1P1 family are found in both prokaryotes as well as in the eukaryotes and thought to be associated with the programmed cell death uh, that is apoptosis and also in the tissue differentiation in our case. They also secreted extracellularly means it is produced because it is enzyme so it obviously production will be in the cytoplasm and then it will be released outside. So it is secreted extracellularly and works extracellularly. Their functions and distinguishing feature means they have potential of being exploited in the field of biotechnology where we are going to use in our cases. This nuclease S1 have many different names has been given. So sometimes it is also called as nuclease S1 aspergillus, single stranded nuclease, uh, nucleate endonuclease, deoxyribonuclease S1, aspergillus nuclease S1, uh, neuroaspera, crassa, single stranded specific endonuclease, S1 nuclease, single stranded endodeoxyribonuclease, single stranded specific endonuclease. These are different names for this nuclease enzyme and all are same enzyme. Now, if you say uh, this nuclease S1, most nuclease are homologous, whatever we have seen and to each other in a protein domain family called nuclease S1 P1. Members of this family have certain characteristic features, roughly they are glycoproteins in the nature, means they are associated with the carbohydrate molecules. Each nuclease enzyme requires three zinc molecules, zinc ion for as a cofactor. It contains a common active side motif. It requires acidic pH, just now you, you have seen uh, 4.5 is the optimum pH. It contains three glycan bond with the amino acid asparagine via N-glycosylation and it is having two disulfide bridges between the cysteine residue. So these are the different characteristic features of this nuclease S1 P1 enzyme. These requirements and distinguishing features are responsible for their functional efficacy. It is catalyzed and these four features are needed for enzyme functionality. The three zinc ions are vital for their catalysis. It is required for their catalytic activity, catalytic processes. The first two zinc activates the attacking water in hydrolysis, while the third zinc stabilizes the leaving oxygenation. So what is the use of three zinc molecules? Two zinc for the attacking water in hydrolysis and third zinc for stabilizing the leaving oxygen molecule. Now, what are the application of uh, this nuclease enzyme? So, currently we are going to talk because it, uh, we are requiring in the genetic engineering gene cloning, but it is going to be used for the removal of single stranded overhangs, tails protruded in from the DNA fragment to generate a blunt in the DNA as we have seen. So, it removes the single stranded overhangs of the DNA and produces blunt in the DNA. That is most important function in genetic engineering. Second, it is going to be used in the S1 transcript mapping. Third, it is helps in the opening of hairpin loop generated during the production of cDNA. So probably uh, in few lectures we are going to talk about the how cDNA library has been created. There, the hairpin loops need to be cleaved by this S1 nuclease and remove it. Then creation of unidirectional deletion of DNA fragment in conjugation with exonuclease 3. So creation of unidirectional deletion of DNA fragment when used in conjugation with exonuclease 3. And fourth one, last one is it introduces breaks in the double stranded DNA, RNA or hybrid at high enzyme and low salt concentration. This is the cDNA. This is the messenger RNA. So reverse transcriptase normally going to form a hairpin loop ultimately. And this is the hairpin loop in the cDNA. This, because this is the single, uh, single oligonucleotide sequence is there. Ultimately, we need to remove this hairpin loop from here. And that hairpin loop will be removed by S1 nuclease. So this S1 nuclease helps in the removal of hairpin loop from the cDNA. At the time of cDNA creation or cDNA library creation. So this is some of the information about the S1 nuclease. How it is going to be active inhibition and inactivation? So there are some inhibitors which inhibits the 
न्यूक्लियज एस वन लाइक मेटल चिलेटर्स पायरोफॉसफेट फॉसफेट फाइव प्राइम राइबो न्यूक्लियोटेराइल एंड डी ऑक्सी राइबो न्यूक्लियोटाइड्स दीज आर इनहिबिटर्स ऑफ एस वन न्यूक्लियज एंड इट इन एक्टिवेटेड बाई हीटिंग एट मोर देन सेवेंटी डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड फॉर टेन मिनट्स इन दी प्रेजेंस ऑफ ईडीटीए सो दीज आर द इनहिबिटर्स एंड हाउ इट इज गोइंग टू बी इनएक्टिवेटेड फिजिकली सो इंजाइम्स विल नॉट फंक्शन इन दैट केस सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट फॉर टूडेज uh regarding the important enzyme of uh, s1 nucleage or nucleage s1 hope you have understand it if you have not subscribe my channel you can subscribe it if you like the video press the like button and share it with the colleagues your friends you can uh, follow my channel on different social networking sites uh these are the different handles if you have any query any comments you can write in the comment box thank you very much have a nice day